So the first shapes we're gonna be looking at today is an alternating minor and major arpeggio pattern. Uh, the whole thing basically kind of goes a little bit like this. <laughs> So basically, play a little faster. It's so basically, all that is is just um, two lines that are based off a major and minor chord. So uh, the riff itself, or the arpeggio itself, is based in D minor. And it goes off basically just a regular D minor triad, which is. But I slide in up from the C. So there's that implied D minor uh, 7 harmony right there. So starting here, I basically just ascend a typical minor D minor chord. But I go up, hit the root. And hit that final but instead of hitting that high high fifth I just alternate and then this next little part of the uh, the pattern kind of runs to something like you'd see in a pentatonic run where it's kind of like a so I'm basically just descending down this part which is What's kind of interesting about this little lick is that it doesn't follow a traditional pattern where it's... It almost feels like it gets cut off a note short, uh, just... It kind of feels a little bit different. And then um, basically just does that whole pattern once. And then it alternates down to C, uh, C major. So you're basically just having. That's the wrong chord. So it just goes between the. So the major part starts in C, and it kind of follows the same pattern as the, um, the D minor one, just in a C major form. So it's. So I, I right there I've outlined the whole major triad, including the doubling up the root. So now I'm kind of pulling off, and it's almost like you're doing a, um, uh, you're st you're staying in the key, and you're playing diatonically, but it it's like a little passage within the chord itself. So. Fingering is kind of hard for that one too, just because you got to stretch and you're using a lot of your pinky and your middle and your ring finger together as you're descending. And then that last jump, you go with your pinky. So it's. So it basically just is, that's just a very uh, simple example of how you can uh, use alternating major minor patterns. And it's a, a really great alternate picking exercise too, just because of how you're going up and down and, and moving, especially with that part of both of the lines. You're almost kind of like alternate picking and you're pulling off as well as onto the... So kind of the whole play, the whole thing kind of played together would be. Yeah, still cool. it feels kind of funky, but you kind of get the idea. It's a really great thing to practice. Just to be able to get your hand stretches, I will leave a tab of this uh, exercise below. Um, another really cool one you can do that's more based off of a um, 
five string arpeggio and has a uh, major seven included in there. A kind of the same concept alternating between major and minor, but uh, kind of has some passages that stay diatonic as well as throwing in a little bit of harmonic minor in there. Kind of creates a really nice neoclassical kind of sound. Uh, it goes a little something like this. I'll play the whole thing just so you get an idea. So yeah, basically that's just another example of alternating from minor to major, um, and again, staying diatonic to the key. So you're not going out, but still putting little passages inside the arpeggio themselves. So breaking that down, uh, it's basically just, it's just a, another uh, D minor arpeggio. So you have the root, third, fifth, root, third, fifth, again. But with this one, I'm throwing on the uh, A flat. So I, I'll tell you, man, I think that's the seventh, sixth. I don't know. It's something. It's either a sixth or a seventh. And I don't know. It kind of just creates. Um, I don't know if you technically consider it an inversion because the root doesn't necessarily start there, but it kind of adds to it and kind of gives the uh, the feel of more of like a major seven, minor seven. It's either a seventh or a sixth. I can't think off the top of my head what it is, but it's one of those. Anyway, it adds kind of color to the arpeggio. And then as I go back up, I add a little kind of an Ingve, Ingve flair to it with a little bit of a harmonic minor. Of... So it's basically... And then, like I said, basically follows that same concept, same patterns, of just alternating to that major. So it's... But also the same thing, it even follows that added extra inversion with the minor, so... So again, it's the exact same pattern. So the major, though, is played... So the little passage uh, for the minor and the major is... Uh, for the major, it's... Uh, so yeah, I mean, you kind of get the idea. It's just using the same patterns and alternating with major and minor and that's that's the fun part because when you use them in chord progressions songs key changes uh it could sound really cool and it's a really cool way to kind of flavor up your uh your part so again i will play the whole thing in succession so you can kind of hear it Yeah, and that's basically about it, boys and girls. Uh, I will leave a transcription for both of the exercises below. Don't forget to practice. Really get your alternate hand going. Really uh, learn your pull-offs and hammer-ons because then you can start adding in phrases to your arpeggios. You don't just have to have sweeps constantly. You could have a sweep or an arpeggio and have like a passage like I did before you lead into the next. Because if you just had... that's pretty and that's cool but it's not as cool when or if you don't have those passages in there just to kind of create an extra bridge between the two parts so that's always something to look out for and to keep on coloring your playing with different chords and stuff so i hope that was helpful for you guys thank you so much for watching and uh yeah have a good